I asked myself the question. It crossed my mind. And I thought to myself, why not enjoy with my heart? And after reading several harrowing stories of some refugees, one of them really touched me. Her name is Halia, and she's seven years old. And she said, the last thing I remember of Syria before we left was when my mother was taking me from our place to our grandparents. The woods were full of dead corpses. I saw dead people with no heads or no hands or legs. I was so shocked I couldn't stop crying. To calm me down, my grandfather told me they were mean people. But I still prayed for them. Because even if some considered them mean, they were still dead human beings. Back at home, I left a friend in Syria. Her name was Wuha. I miss her a lot and I miss going to school with her. I used to play with her with my Atawi butt. I couldn't bring it to me. I also used to have pigeons. One of them had eggs. I would feed them and care for them. I am worried about them. I really pray someone is still caring for them. But here I have a small kitten that I really love. I miss home a lot. I hope one day we'll be back and things will be just like before. So we can deny that every government has its rights, but there are people who run away from the worst at home. They have nothing, just the hope of living, of supporting their families, the hope of being able to wake up and have a smile on their face or just being able to see a smile on their children's face. When you find yourself as a person among the freezing, exhausted people with children, you'll be simply a human being touched by the suffering. Children's and human rights come first. Nobody deserves to be left without food and a roof over their heads. Would it be human to send these people back to where they had to face death? I don't think so. So welcome and welcome everyone. We are really happy to have you tonight. So for those of you who don't really know me, my name is Mr. Michael, Teacher Michael, and also the owner of the Comrade Language Courses. So it's a pleasure to have you tonight. We're going to get something really hot, something really interesting. We are really happy to see you. You're really nice, some of you that I can see. If it's possible, you can open your camera just to see you. Welcome and welcome. So our topic for tonight, it's going to be about migration. So today, out of the world, people move, but they move for different reasons. So we are here. We are not expert in this area, but just here, we're going to practice English, but which is the subject to talk about. So for that reason, I ask all of you guys pay attention and enjoy the moment. So let's go, we're gonna start with the question number one. The question number one says, why do people immigrate to other country? It's a really nice question, guys. So please, everyone, raise your hand and you will get a share. So let's go, please, we're gonna start with Ms. Sterling. Please, Ms. Sterling, you get the mic and go ahead. Good evening, everyone, I'm Sterling. I'm living in Dominican Republic. I am happy to be there with you tonight. I study English with teacher Michael. Before sharing my views on this, this subject, I would like to thank the teacher for always choosing very beautiful and important topic. Thanks to him, I can meet myself on the study English. Before I had no knowledge of immigration, but now I can say that I am an immigration officer. Allow me to give my point of view for this first question. <laughs> yeah, Sir Michael, I think there are many reasons that lead people all over the world from leaving the homeland. Most of them move to rebuild their live in other country. Like finding a good job and study. Others are fleeing to escape poverty, persecution, human rights, violation, millions, or immigration. Not because they want to, but their harm, conflicts, violence, 
walls and all the crises that are increasing. Every world today forced them to leave everything behind to go to country to seek refuges because they no longer feel safe have been targeting of violence only. It's my point of view about the subject, Jamaica. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Congratulations again, and thank you very much for your beautiful comment. You're so brave to give the first comment. I really appreciate it. And your English is really improved. I really love it. Congratulations. So now let's go, please, with somebody else. Let's go with you, um, Mr. Kalanri, please. Why do people immigrate to the country? Welcome. Hello, everyone. Thank you, teacher Michael. Um, I'm glad to be here. Uh, I'm so sorry for the, we, the, the, the past week. I didn't come. Okay, I, I, so I see uh, we have a lot of people here. So welcome to the new person. Why do people immigrate to other countries? Uh, first of all, the migration didn't start yesterday or a century ago. The immigration start at the beginning of the world because the first people who living in the world uh, every time migrate for other place to find uh, something to eat, to find the best place. So we can say the immigration, the migration uh, start the beginning of the, of the world. So now at our century, why people leave their country to go to other country? Um, it's because human rights, it's because uh, violation, it's because sometimes people think other place, other country is better than their country. For example, in Haiti, everyone wants to go to US, everyone wants to go to France, to Europe, uh, to search a better life, a better life. And it's the reason why the people let left their country to go to to other country it's the biggest reason because they think it, if they leave haiti they can have a better life to other country is the biggest reason okay so thank, thank you. you yes and thank you amelian mr Kalari, and congratulations for the way that you elaborate i really appreciate and love your comment as well Okay, so thank you. Let's go, please. We're going to go with somebody else. Let's go with you, Ms. Gerda. Why do people immigrate to other country? Say something about yourself. Open your mic and go ahead. Good evening, guys. My name is Gerda. I'm Asian, but I live in Chile. I'm a new student, and i learning English with T.T. Michael. So I'm very happy to be there tonight. Now, well, for me, I think the people move to the other country for many reasons. The people move to the country for many reasons. Jesus for security, love, better economic situation, and better future. Thank you. Congratulations, Ms. Guerra. You're doing good. Congratulations for your wonderful comment. So let's go now with you, Ms. Ankara. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ankara. So I'm living in the Dominican Republic. So originally from Haiti. So you can imagine how happy I am to be with you tonight to share idea and listen to yours too. 
about this subject because it's been a long time I haven't had the opportunity to be present uh, in the last two club. So even when I am not fully available this evening, so I will try to do my best to participate with you. And for the question, so I did some research and I end up by understanding that the causes of migration are complex, but the most common reason are poverty. So migrants are looking for better socioeconomic living condition. So they are trying to work, work to, uh, to help their, their families stay in the country. So because they are not living just for themselves. So, and other migrants have, uh, live because of political or insecurity problems. So, and also they flee wars, ethnic and religious conflict. And, and also there are some people who migrate for the desire to discover the world. For example, we have some students going on in school exchange or some tourists so to, for visiting, visit, visiting somewhere for a short or a longer period. I'm so sorry for the noise. That's all. Yeah, yeah. congratulations, Miss Ankala. I know you are at work, but the good desire that you have for this beautiful language and this beautiful topic as well, even though you're at work, that cannot prevent you from being there with us. Thank you and congratulations for a beautiful comment. Let's go with you, please, Miss Elda. Why do people immigrate to other country? Thank you, Teacher Michael, for choosing me. Good evening, fellows. My name is Elda. I live in the Dominican Republic. I am a beginner and I am learning English with Teacher Michael. Is it a pride for me as a beginner to be with you tonight, young again? Let's continue to thank the teacher for his humility and for the way teacher. It makes all us want to invite others to come and learn with us because we have evidence that shows this what's why all of us here tonight. Let's thank him again with all our hearts for the good work he is doing without distinction. Number one, since ancient human beings have always traveled back and forth young country to another as immigrant because they went to seek a better life either after a good job to do a good study, missionary journey, sometimes disaster. Is it natural to know the cause of the person leaving the country? To Congratulations, Miss Elda. You're a beginner, but the way that you're doing things, we cannot say that. So thank you. Thank you again and congratulations. So let's please with Miss Kelly. Hello, Miss Kelly. Say something about yourself and go ahead, please. Thank you, Teacher Michael, for choosing me. Good evening, folks. My name is Kelly. I'm from AD. I'm a beginner. I'm learning English with Teacher Michael. I'm glad to be there tonight. What pushes a person to immigrate to another? Country is often because their country is not safe. There is work. There is no money your your life. For example, in my personal quest, the only reason I will go to another country is to have the opportunity to live with my family, to have a better education, to have a better and more secure future. Congratulations, Ms. Kelly. Beginner again from Haiti, connection and electricity problem. You are here. Congratulations to you and your mom as well. And about you, Ms. Tafi. Hello. 
According to you, why do people immigrate to other countries? Good evening, my beautiful people. I am very excited to be on you tonight because I know when I am here, I am in the best place to learn new things. And I really appreciate you for the effort you make to be in there with us tonight. Exactly. My name is Tefi, and I am one of the students of the teacher Michael, the host. And he's a great teacher, like the other student already said, he has no racism and he has no distinction. He loves all of the students. And thank you, teacher Michael, for the beautiful subject you always choose for us. Yes, according to me, before giving my answer, let me talk a bit about the word exactly, migration. In what terms, it's someone who changed the place of habitual residence. One, for a short or long period of time. Two, within a country or across international borders. And three, voluntary or involuntary reasons. There are different types of migration. Let's talk about four of them. Internal migration, moving to a new womb within the same state, country, or continent. External migration, moving to a new home in a different state, country, or continent. Immigration, leaving one country to move to another. And immigration, moving into a new country. Let's talk about the question. Each person's reasons are already different, but they are usually based on a balance of either. There are two factors in question, push and pull factors. Push factors. This push people to leave an area like political problem, like persecution, war, and so forth. Social problem, poor services, lack of education, need for a better health care. And finally, economic problem, unemployment, poor pay, and so on. Pull factors, these pull people to come to an area. Social problem, social better living, available services, love is one of the reasons also, and to follow a family member. The most common reason is because they search of better living and a good environment. Thank you. Wow, and wow again. <laughs> you talk like an expert. I really love your comment, especially the way that you start and the way that you finish. Congratulations again, Ms. Tafi, and you're, you're doing really good one of my best students. Let's go with you, please, Miss Erika. Why do people immigrate to the country? Good evening, everyone. I am Erika. I am from Dominican Republic. I am beginner a student. I am learning English with teacher Michael. I am really happy to be tonight. Thank you, teacher Michael, for showing me. Uh, when many move to look for work or new economic opportunity, to set their family and spend more time with them, for lack of access to education, violence in the country, or also due to personal issues. So shut, so clear. Congratulations and thank you very much for your beautiful comment. Even though you are sick but you do your best to be there. Thank you and congratulations. Okay, so now let's go with you please, Ms. Zule. Why do people immigrate to a country according to your point of view? Okay, good night for all. Um, my name is Zule Sadai. I live in Chile. Um, I'm happy to be in this class with brother and friends. According to the... Um, um, first question, unfortunately, uh, there are many, many reasons, for example, and uh, no being able in a house, uh, not having bathroom for personal hygiene, um, poor diets, overcoding experience racial discrimination, and being abused uh, by abuse, abusers. 
Hey, congratulations. Your comments Thank is really nice. I really love it. Congratulations. Zilly. So now let's go really quick with you, um, Miss Judith. Why do people immigrate to other part of the world? Miss Judith, please. Thank you, Michel Michael. I am Judith. I live in Dominican Republic. I learn English with teacher Michael. It's a pleasure to me to be there with you tonight. My answer for the first question, as a matter of fact, people move to other countries for many reasons, like political instability, economical problems, and also health problems. Let's talk about two of them. Firstly, political instability often brings violence, crimes, and war. Nobody likes to live such awful situation. So avoid that. Many people immigrate to another country where they could find a most stable environment. Secondly, I strongly believe that economical problems are one of the foremost reasons people leave the country to immigrate to another one because nobody wouldn't like to be unable to provide for the needs of the family, like foods, housings, and clothing. And many parts of the world, people are facing that reality almost every day. That is why some of them decided to leave the country and to immigrate to another world where they could find a better life or a better situation. That's my point. Really nice comment. I love it. Congratulations. Let's go with you, please, Ms. Jelanda. Good evening, everyone. I hope you are doing well. Um, so let me introduce myself. I am Yolanda. I live in Dominican Republic, and I am teacher micro student. And I am really honored to be here. This club is a significant opportunity for all of us to share ideas about a beautiful and a touching subject. Immigration to the country is not a simple task. The reasons why are multiple and complex. According to an article, people leave their native countries to search for a better life. This desire to live in better conditions and being able to sustain a decent life. People move to other countries because of various needs. Mine was the search of peace. So my family and I thought it would rather leave a country that is not at peace to seek sanctuary elsewhere. And Sharon Malta, we gave his personal point of view about this subject. So he said, since the beginning for mankind, the reasons for migration have remained fundamentally the same, to find a better life. Some of my ancestors were searching for freedom from famine, some from religion or question. And my seafood Viking ancestor had a loss for land, but at the root of it all, all people want to be happy, to be well-fed and free from fear and oppression. As one of my wedding teachers used always to say, we are all the same except for the details. Interesting. Well, fact, all of us we really love your comment, Miss Yolanda. Congratulations. So now let's go please with somebody else. You, Miss Francesca, why do you think people immigrate to other country. Okay, good, good. Hello, hello guys. I am Francesca. I live in uh, DO. I'm a student. I student English with teacher Michael. Okay, about me, I'm not an expert, but I know since the beginning of the world, gender immigrate. The Bible call char characters, the nomad were the first immigrant on Eve. Someti Sometimes the leave were threatening. Before responding to this question, there are several types of immigration. Economic immigration, Family sponsor, sponsored immigration, the refugee, 
the, uh, the, the insecurity person, student, immigrant. Very after there's a uh, unfold causes for people to immigrate in other country, we can see poverty, conflict, social political difficult, difficulty. And then we can say that the, the, the people search the better place in the world. Thank you. Really nice. Congratulations, Ms. Francesca. I really love your comment and your English is really improved as well. So now let's go please with you, Mr. Luis Jeff. Hello. Good evening, everyone, everybody. My name is Jeff Luis. I'm I'm a teacher. I'm a feature student of Chicho Michael. I'm living in the Republic of Dominicana, Dominican Republic. Ofuji is our, our outside the country of origin though to feel persecution, conflict, violence, all the circumstances that have sexually disrupted public or other default weaker protection. Definition of the term migrant. However, according to the United, United Nations, this term is this, this not only person you are who visited in the foreign country for more than on here, whatever the cause, voluntary or involuntary of the movement. And whatever the means, regular, regular, yours, Oh, Congratulations, Mr. Luis. Your English is so good. I really love it. And we are we are really um waiting for you and I'd like to be with us in our in our team. So congratulations and thank you. So let, let's go with you, please, Mr. Emmanuel. Good evening, everyone. Special teacher Michael. My name is Emmanuel Jasme. I live in AET. Thank you, teacher Michael, for giving the opportunity to speak to the question why do people immigrate to other countries? People immigrate to other countries for search of a better life. When people could not get enough food for their family, when someone no had work and few opportunities, Sometimes the people leave our country for wives, natural disasters or persecution must move for economic reasons. Thank you. Yes, congratulations, Mr. Emmanuel from Haiti. We're really happy to have you and thank you very much for a beautiful comment. Let's go with you please, Ms. Elian. Why do people immigrate to a country according to your point of view? Thank you, teacher Michael, for giving me opportunities to introduce myself about the question number one. Well, first of all, I'm say hello to other guys, especially teacher Michael, the best, and my classmate. So I'm alien. I live in Chile. I'm learning English with teacher Michael. It's my pleasure to be there with us tonight. So about the question number one, many people immigrate to other country, countries for many reasons. It's different. I will go to, to give some example. First, some people move in search of wed, of work economic opportunities to join family or to study. And then other people immigrate because they have persecution, terrorism, or human rights violation, violation. And finally, people move from place to enough in order better living condition. It's my point about this question. Thank you, teacher. 
congratulations. Your mother, you have a baby. But you always do your best. Congratulations. I really appreciate your comment. So now let's go with you, please, Mr. Evans. Why do people immigrate to the country, according to you? Good evening, guys. I'm Evans Boulin. I'm from AD. I'm beginner. I'm learning English with teacher Michael. I'm extremely happy to be there tonight. And thank you, teacher Michael, for choosing me. Uh, well, for the question number one, I think uh, people immigrate to other countries because the country where they live does not give them the opportunities they need to meet their daily needs. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Evans. Your comment will be clear and also so simple. But congratulations, because even though you're a beginner, but you're doing really good. So now let's go, please, with you, Mr. Jefte or Miss Alisa, please. Good evening, everyone. I am Jefte. I live in the Dominican Republic. I am a beginner and I'm learning English with teacher Michael. I'm really happy to be there tonight. Well, for me, I think that people immigrate to or the country for many reasons, for study, for escape of violent conflict, for environmental factors, for education purposes, or to run it with family. Really good comment. Congratulations, Mr. Jeff T. And about you, Mr. Tenwell, what do you have to say? Why do people immigrate to the country? Good evening, people. My name is Joshua. I'm a beginner. I'm from Dominican Republic, but originally from AD. I'm learning English with teacher Michael. I'm really excited to be there tonight. Well, about the question number one. Many people leave their country for many reasons. Some have fled from wars, natural disaster, or persecution. But most have moved to other countries for economic situation. Congratulations again, the dude. Thank you very much for your wonderful comment. So now let's go with you, please, Miss Mukta. Why do people move to other country according to your point of view? Good evening, fellows. I'm Mirta. I'm um, elementary, I'm learning English with the best teacher, so you know who I'm talking about, <laughs> Michael Rizma. I'm pretty happy to be there tonight. Teacher Michael, thank you for choosing. I totally agree with our people already talk. Additionally, still others move in in response to the adverse effects of climate change. For example, many people move from Europe, natural disasters, uh, other environmental factors. Many people, for example, many people move from Ukraine. That's why. Congratulations, especially for the last example, people from Ukraine. They are trying to move all over the world. So thank you and congratulations, Miss Milta. Okay, so now let's go please the last person in this question. It's going to be you, Miss Martin. Hello, let's go with you, please. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Martin. I'm from Haiti. I live in Dominican Republic and I'm learning English with teacher Michael. I'm glad to be there tonight. According to my understanding, I think people immigrate to other countries for several reasons. For economic, political, and security. Let's talk about economic reasons. Sometimes, even in his own country, it is difficult to find a job to support 
our needs, when we have the ability to pick it up, it's hard. Satan, I would what we are going to eat or drink, and even satisfy our basic needs. Thank you, Jamaica. Okay, so thank you. And thank you very much, Miss Martin. Congratulations for this beautiful comment. And your English is different now. I really love it and keep improving. So now, please, guys, let's go. We're going to move to the question number two, which, um, which is a, a kind of similar to the number one. But the question number two says, what are some difficulties immigrants use to cope with during the journey? Okay, you can talk about the journey. Or you can talk about the destination when the person arrives. What kind or what sort of difficulties immigrant used to cope with? Let's go, please. We're going to keep moving with this question. Okay, good, guys. All of you, please try to raise your hand, especially those of you who didn't have opportunity to comment in the question number one. Okay, so now let's go, please, with you, Ms. Yolanda. What do you think? What kind of difficulties migrant used to cope with? So the first challenge of moving abroad is often the journey itself. Many immigrants never even arrive at their destination and young people face particular challenges because of their age and experiences. They carry the scares of war and displacement with them. And sometimes children are forced to flee alone and arrive in Australia as unaccompanied minors. And although children are very resilient, some children experience physical and psychological effects of trauma, issues with identity and belonging, and the worst, changing family responsibility. Cyril Jasbeck, he is a journalist, and he decided to spend a week documenting the situation of the Croatian Serbian border. By far, um, the most touching moment for him occurred early on her morning. A limping mother and son who did speak English were unable to keep the pace of the group and fell behind. And the expression on the woman's face was full of fear and despair. Her son, whose boots were too big, struggled and he collapsed. I can't... I can't imagine what it must be like to pack your life in a suitcase or backpack and live a such a long and urgent journey. Interesting, but it's so sad to talk about this experience as well, even though it's not us, but they are human. We can just imagine. Let's go with you, with you, please, Ms. Judith. What kind of difficulties migrant will use to cope with during the journey? Personally, I think that when the migrants get to the late destination, they are facing problems, many problems, like being legal in their host country, low paying job, that often leads to low housing education and health quality, especially if they are not legal. It could be revealed difficult for them to get a driver license and a bank, a bank account. Furthermore, undocumented immigrants are usually exploited. That's my point. Sad, so sad, but thank you very much for the comment. So, and about you, Ms. Douglin. What are some difficulties immigrants will use to face up during the journey? Mm, thank you very much, Teacher Michael, for giving me another chance to continue giving my ideas about this subject. Yeah, according to me, I can say that migrants often encounter a lot of difficulty during the journey. They have no place to sleep and they also face death. Personally, I remember a story that me during my trip. There was one girl, woman, who was illegal to immigrate to the other country. The gentleman who helped her to travel illegal without papers 
across a weaver with her to be able to wave at her destination. The young woman could not swim and almost died. It is sad to see the difficulty that migrant face while traveling. That's all, Teacher Michael. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Stacey, please. I totally agree with all of the guys who already talked about it. But I want to add some, some reasons more. Some difficulty, the difficulty we, they will encounter it depends on the way they try to, to travel in. And if they try to go illegal, the difficulty we'll encounter will be more than if they travel legally. For example, if a family member leave, leave behind some of member like children of wife or husband, they will suffering before they go to the trip. But the main difficulty with waiting for them in the country where they will immigrate, such as language barrier, is the main challenge as it affects the ability to communicate with others. Housing problem, access to medical service, culture differences, and prejudice. I want to talk about the last one, prejudice. I have no doubt that most citizens and the land of people migrate think that foreigners are inferior to them. Why not? In my experience, I saw a lot of hateful and racist people who treat immigrants badly. They think they are nobody and we don't know nothing, as well as they don't treat them with respect. In fact, they face into humiliation, insults, mockery, bullying, teasing, accusation, abuse, and so on. It's not only in one place, but everywhere, like at school, work and work, practice, and the neighborhood, etc. They face into discrimination only because they are migrants. On the other hand, they also take advantage of it. The law of some country don't allow illegal aliens or migrants to wreck, but they give them jobs and other way to pay them cheap labor. They don't pay them a good wages only cheap labor. They work harder than the others. They can complain if they try to, to do it. The bossy use oppression, like they will call immigration to take them away from this own country. But sometimes they back down because they don't want to return to their home country. In conclusion, if some of government dot put some laws that may be rust. And without some campaign of anti-racism and prejudice reduction on social network and some country also, the difficulty will be more serious than what they encounter in the children. Thank you. Thank you very much. You talk like, a, like an attorney. We can just feel what you feel in your heart. We are human. Anyway, thank you and congratulations. Let's go with you, please, Mr. Emmanuel. Thank you, Teacher Marco, for the opportunity to give my opinion about the second question. This should also consider potential language and cultural barriers and the, now, and the new land, as well as the cost and legal complications of trying to become citizens or permanent residents there. Those who fail to obtain legal status, fail to obtain, fail it hard to obtain good employment, quality housing, education, or health care. They may also find it difficult to obtain a driver's license or a bank account, and all too often, undocumented immigrants to exploit perhaps a result of shift labor. Thanks. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Ms. Elika, let's go with you, please, really quick. Uh, yes. 
Uh, there are many such insecurity. Very often they have nothing to eat. It is sometimes difficult for them for to fame. Accommodation, the risk, detention, detention, and deportation of human trafficking. Yeah, it's really true. Really true. Close to us, that is happening. Thank you very much, Miss Erika. So now let's go with you, please, Miss Alien. Thank you, Teacher Michael. So, in general, there are a lot of difficulties weight used to cope during the journey. I will mention the main difficulties. Find a suitable job. Learn a official language. Lack of family and social support from the origin. Get used to the climate. Adapt to a new culture, financial constraint, lack of social integration, find suitable accommodation, experiencing um, racism, racism, or discrimination. That's my point. Thank you. Okay, so thank you. And congratulations as well, Miss um, Elian. You did a really good job, especially sharing your opinion about the question number two. Okay, because of the time, we cannot wait. Let's go please to the question number three. It's a really good one. Everybody try to say something. The question number three says, should any good government limit the number of immigrants entering the country? If yes, what would be a good number? Again, should any government limit the numbers of immigrants entering the country? What do you think, guys? Hello, let's go with you, please, Mr. Ejimi. Hello, you hear me? Hear me now? Yes, we Hello? hear you. Yes, we hear you. Okay, thank you, Teacher Michael, for the second second opportunity uh, according to a and e immigrate and immigration and naturality when there are so many people coming on the country the government will have more work to do to control and provide service of all of people who come. And then to pray to reducing the poverty in the country. So if the country keep receiving more people, they won't have enough job for all of them. That can cause a lot of people to be in, in employment. This is my opinion. Thank you. Really appreciate that. It's an, our reality. Thank you very much. And about you, please, Miss Kelly. Thank you, Teacher Michael. Yes, our, yes, our government should limit the number of immigrants ensuring its country it is quite difficult to express my ideas on this subject in English, but I think the exact number would be two million immigrants. A really good number, about two million. Really good. Thank you and congratulations. I think Mr. Joe Biden is listening. About two million will be a really good number. Okay, so now l l let's go with you, please, Miss Stacy. Well, that's a trick question, but I will try to give my answer with reservation. <laughs> From my perspective, I can say yes. I think they should. I will not give any amount, but I will give some example to help you understand me better. Let's take an example. 
if you are going to travel by boat, there are a lot of passengers at the edges of the shore. And the owner, and, and the owner knows the amount of people he can brought on board. He knows also that can happen if he take it over the normal. What do you think? I will let you think it. I want to give you another example. Don't forget every action has consequences. If you have a house you build in by yourself and you know the capacity of the house, like how many bedrooms, bathrooms, etc., and you have to receive some people, the person who call you to talk about at first will ask you how many people you can accommodate in your house. It's because the person know everything as a capacity. But furthermore, as a matter of fact, it's the same thing for the government which has a country to manage. The same things for the government. Even though a country can have a biggest land superficie, it's not only the land you should consider the main part if they have a great infrastructure to receive or accommodate a large number of people. If they don't have prepared for that, they can not give access for that. And this modern age, each country use a strategy. They don't say no directly, but they require everyone who wants to travel to have a passport and visa. Sometimes it's hard to find because a lot of things they ask for and they have a lot of criterion which will represent us and direct limit or a barrier. Honestly, I don't have any problem with any government who wants to set up a limit to protect the country, the citizens, but they should do it with justice without racism and prejudice. That's my point. Thank you. Really good answer. Thank you very much. Now let's go with you, please, Miss Ankala. So my my point of view on this question is a little devised. So I think no and yes. I think it will depend on the size of the country, um, the economy, and also the capacity of the government to take care of the native of the country. Because if the majority of the native of the country are struggling to live in the country, for example, they cannot find work or send their children to school, this country could not receive many migrants or not at all. For this, uh, for this, I think the government should limit the number of migrants considerably. So, because the authorities must have the necessary means to welcome them. So, and as I said before, the number will also depend on the on the economic capacity of the country and other stuff. Thank you. Very much, Miss Antala. I really appreciate your comment as well because you're kind of balanced. Even though Miss Kelly had a good number, but you guys you can say something as well. So let, let's go with you, please, Miss Tavlin. Thank you so much, my teacher. Do you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Thank you. Yeah, teacher Michael, honestly, I can say that the government must have limited num a limited number of people to enter the country. This so that I don't have compassion for other people because normally people flee the country for several reasons. It's because of poverty, for insecurity, so I don't want to hurt other people and I don't want to be without compassion for my neighbor, you know? I can say, give, give you most details about it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations, thank you very much. And yes, you're kind of careful. Let's go with you please, Miss Monique. 
Thank you, teacher Marco. Personally, I say yes. The government shall limit the number of immigrants entering the country because by accepting a lot of immigrants, it, it can create a lot of problems, especially in the economic level of the country. Thank you. Thank you as well, and congratulations for your comment and for your English, and your English is really improved now. So now let's go really quick now. It's going to be the question number four. Nice question. All of you guys try to, be, to do your best to say something, and especially give details. The question number four says, should immigrants have the same right as the native citizen? Again, should immigrants have the same right as native citizen, what do you think, guys? Uh-huh. Let's go with you, please, Miss Francesca. What do you think? Thank you, Mr. Michael. Okay. The difference between immigrant and natives that don't have the same rights if they are illegal. A person who has left his country to settle in another country, he Arab will not have the same privilege quickly. But in the time they can enjoy the same rights as, as a native citizen. Example, in case of natural, naturalization. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Congratulations. And about you, the other guys, do you think the immigrants should have the same right as the native citizen? Mr. Ejime, please. Thank you, Teacher Michael. Thank you for according to me, give my opinion about the fourth question. Oh. According to me and my experience in our country, migrants are limited, even if the person become, becomes a citizen, he will not have the same right as the native person, especially in the system that he is part of the good progress of the country, they are limited. Only if the migrant, if, if the migrant comes to lend services to the country's government. Thank you, Teacher Michael. Thank you as well. Congratulations. Nice question because I know most of you, you are immigrants. What do you think? Should immigrants have the same right as the native citizen? Miss Elika, please. Uh, thank you, Teacher Michael, for choosing me. Uh, human rights are white in a way, teen or women being regulant of their nationality, place of residence, gender, uh, national, or any origin, color, pollution, language, or any uh, other condition. We all have semi when white without discrimination. Congratulations. Really young, but with knowledge. So now let, let's go with you, please, Mr. Emmanuel. What do you think? Thank you, teacher Michael. People leave the country illegally or the legally. If someone is immigrant illegally, it's very difficult to have the same rights of the native citizen. But if someone is legally, he can be following the laws on this country. And then it depends on the political of this country. After all, if someone legally, he can enjoy the same right of a native citizen. 
topic. Okay, so thank you and congratulations for the comment. And about your mistake for you, what do you have to say? Okay, thank you, Mr. Michael. Yes, it's a tricky question because each of us don't see things at the same eyes. But before I give my opinion about the answer, about the question, I will make a difference between right and privilege. All right is something that cannot be legally denied, such as speech, press, religion, and raising a family. On the other hand, a privilege is something that can be given and taken away and is considered to be a special advantage or opportunity that is available only to certain people. From my point of view, there is no shoot about rights. All human have the exact same equal and identical rights. They may have different privilege depending on multiple factors of variable legitimacy, but the rights are the same. We all have the right, have the, the, we all have the right to personal safety, for example, but things like voting to are a privilege, not a right. And in some country, they don't give this privilege to immigrants. Most of the people, it's helpless. They treat immigrants like they are no, nothing. Of course, they have right because they are human beings too. I think they should be and consider people regardless of their nationality, skin color, race, and so forth. Every person is equally. That's my point. Thank you. Especially for the differences between um, privilege and right. And about you, Mr. John Slay. Hello. I... I'm gonna give my point of discretion. I think in a bar, I can say yes. In another way, I can't say no. Because as an immigrant, you're still moving to another country for a variety of reasons. So if you if you get in another country, so you can't be like someone who, who got the same right as as another as another citizen, right? So I think there's a way that we can consider ourselves to not be a problem for other people. You, you, you got you. Yeah, we got you. Yes, we get it. Yeah, so people still move into another country for a variety of reasons, like employment, like uh, meeting our family. So the, the government of this country give us a lot of opportunities so we have to to get a lot of respect for it so i don't think that it's it's a normal it's a normal way to think that we got the same right to, to the another citizen no. congratulations sir you're kind of humble because even though you're maybe good but you know the limit i really appreciate that sometimes we have different opinion but it's really nice so thank you and let's go with you, please, Miss Natasha. Do you think immigrants should have the same right as the native citizen? Open your mic and go ahead, please, Miss Natasha. Thank you, Mr. Michael. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Natasha. I study English with Mr. Michael. About this question, I think in the world, all countries distinguish between migrants and non-migrants, or be a non-migrant. But Haiti is different. It is the most hospitable country in the world. They are not illegal migrants. They are migrants who come just to work and pleasure. Thank you. Mm. Congratulations. I love it. Maybe a lot of people, they did research far away, but they didn't think about your beautiful, beautiful comment. I really appreciate it and congratulations as well. So the question number five says, how does migrants affect the economic situation in the country where you live? 
how does immigrants or migrants affect the economic situation in the country where you live? Hello, let's go with you, please, Ms. Judith. Yes, good evening, everyone. Good evening, ma'am. Yes, um, teacher Michael, I missed you. Yes, welcome I back. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm happy to have you. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm going to say I'm here because Mrs. Edma, she put um, the th um, at her status everything. She's a good marketer, okay? You have to pay her. She's yes. doing good. <laughs> yes. First of all, I want to say something because I didn't say anything regarding um, immigration meaning. Can I, and after I will um, respond yes. to question number four. Yes, the problem. Okay. Go ahead, please. Okay. Me, migrant, this is a person who moved from one place to another, especially in order to find work or better, or better living conditions. And some of us, when I say some of us, Haitians, because some of us, we are living Haiti because of political problem because I know friends who came with a lot of money. They have their rest restaurants or beauty parlor. They have their own business. They're not depending on the Dominican government. You know, Some of us, we're not, we didn't want to be immigrant because leaving your country, it's leaving everything, <laughs> your family, your life, your friends, studies and everything. And it's not easy. And unfortunately, the International Organization for Migration, IOM, in 2020, said 281 million international migrants are 3.6 of worldwide population. That's mean it's a lot. And the, the French Development Agency said, some immigrant is not like people think. When you when you immigrant, like you are killers or, or you are stealing, no. They said, some of us, we have to move for conflicts in our country, like we know economic or political issue, violence, persecution, and climate change. And sometimes too, religious, when you part of some um, of the true religion, they persecute you. Sometimes you have to move without, you know, you didn't plan to be immigrant. And to what I see positive, the document said, it said the diaspora, and I get shocked and I get surprised. I didn't know the French development agency will use that word diaspora because in Haiti, we use that word a lot. It said we contribute positively in the world economy. That's true because we know Haitian, we send money every all the time to our family, you know? And to some people, they are greedy. And I'm not gonna give nationality. They are greedy, even their country, they are better than other one. They want to be immigrant. They, they have the American dream and they just travel to have more money. Nowadays, people really um, affected Venezuela, Haiti, and Ukraine. Ukraine because of the war. And Venezuela, economic problem. Haiti, political and economic problems. But it's not because some of us, we want to, you know, we have to. And like we said, La Caixa La Cai, whom still be home, and all of us I think we missed home. And question number five. Before number five, I have answer for question number four. I think this is Edume. He said something. When you are legal immigrant, that doesn't mean you have the same rights as a citizen. That's true. I know a case because I used to be the USCIS interpreter for US immigration in Florida. That guy is Haitian and he had the American passport and he get deported because he was one of the worst criminal. That's mean even you can have American passport. I don't know about France, but I know more about American. That doesn't mean if you kill people, if you too much for them, they can deport you. 
That's mean even you are a legal immigrant, you have to careful to be careful. And it's not easy to be immigrant. I can tell. And question five, please. Can I see it again? I'm sorry to give my answer. Okay, affect the economic. I always say that we need an affect economic issue. Whatever the country, I can say immigrants or migrants, I'm sorry, we are one of the positive um, power for people economy. That's why Canada, they always open their doors um, for Haitians or African or whatever, whoever who qualified, they don't accept whatever the, the, you know, whatever the migrants. If you qualify, you are welcome to Canada too. That's mean we didn't affect anything regarding on the economy. We are the one of the powerful people giving better to to whatever the country we are, especially Haitian and Venezuelan. Okay, that was that's it. <laughs> I hope you guys or oh, teacher, you understand, and I hope you agree. I don't know. Yes, congratulations. We're really happy to have you back. Congratulations Thank and congratulations so again. Let's go with you, please, Miss Judith. How does um, migrant affect the economic situation in the country where you are? Excuse me. From my perspective, right here, where I live in Dominican Republic, the migrants affect considerably the economical situation on, of my country. Most people think that two of the vital aspects of the economy here are agriculture and construction. And one of the fields wouldn't have been successful without the useful hands of the hardworking migrants. Furthermore, the migrants do the most part of the domestic chores what alerts the houses honors the opportunity to go working for every higher wages. That's my point. Okay, so thank you very much and congratulations. Deep comment. Please, let's go with you, please, Miss Yolanda. So how how immigrants contribute to the Dominican Republic's economy? The fruit of the Trent OECD Hilo project, it's a book I read while preparing this club. On the first paragraph on page 24, they said, immigration, especially from Negbo Wing 80, has contributed to the development of the Dominican Republic for the past century. This fact has remained constant as the Dominican Republic's economy has transitioned from agro expert and import substitution towards services and tourism. This report aims to provide the empirical evidence on the economic contribution of immigrants in the Dominican Republic for the benefit of policy makers and the broader public. And also on the last page, 145, a beautiful note was made that I love a lot. He said immigrants make a positive contribution to the government budget as they pay more indirect taxes and benefit less from public expenditure than the native born population. Really interesting and really good your comment. I really appreciate your comment as well, the way that you gave it. And I think it's like positive as Miss. Um, Judith and you, Miss Yolanda. And about you, the other guys, what do you have to say, Miss? Let's go with you, please, Miss Stacy. Thank you, Mr. Michael, again. Yes, well, I read, I read some article when I was preparing this question. Let me share my seek with you. And 1990, 1990, American Immigration Institute survey of prominent economists for out of five said that migrants had a favorable impact on economic growth. 
because they contribute mightily to the economy by paying billion in annual taxes, by filling low wages jobs that keep domestic industry competitive, and by spurring investment and job creation. According to another seeking, experts note that immigrants are blamed for unemployment because Americans can see the job immigrants fill, but not the job they create through productivity, capital formation, and demand for goods and services. Immigrants pay more than $90 billion in taxes every year and receive only $5 billion in welfare. All those states prove immigrant help increases labor resources, which increase the productive capacity of the economy and the country they migrate. The positive impact on economy are many, like increased cultural diversity, skill gaps of file, boost to the local economy, government tax revenue increase, and so forth. Migration also deliver major economic benefits to home countries, while migrants spend most of their wages in their host countries. Boosting demand to there, they also tend to send money to support family back home. Such remittances have been known to exceed official development assistance, and this one of the negative effects they consider. For example, I was talking with my friend who lives uh, in France. She told me the government limit the how much money they can send to the home country. If they pass, surpass the, 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 the limit of amount, they cannot send it. That's, that, uh, that helped me to, to understand. They don't like that when we, we, we send back because the, the, the economy can affect by that. However, after all, my conclusion is that migrants are an excellent provider for the country where they migrate. They provide whole society with knowledge, skill, and competitive, competitiveness. The key to a country grow, develop, and stable. Thank you. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Miss Stephy, your comment was really nice and deep as well. Okay, let's go with you, please, Miss Ketia. Hello. Hello to everyone. Um, my answer is, it's true that immigrants um, provide some to the government, but we have to see also the U.S. population contribute to government found by paying taxes and add to costs by using public services. But the level differ because some immigrant, if you compare an immigrant and a born native person, they have similar education and their background have about the same impact on the government finance. But high level of immigration can put a lot of stress on budget on the state and local government also. Um, on that situation, the state and the city who got a large number of immigrants often have to invest more money in public education and other services immigrants receive then they, they collect in taxes from that population. And we can see when people come to the US with a lot of children, there's a lot of impact because most of the found go to their education. It's children and old people who affect a lot um, the economy of the United States. Yes, congratulations. It's true experience. I really love it. And I think the other guys also they love your comment. So thank you. And thank you very much for this beautiful um, comment. So now let's go with you, please, Miss Tarlene. 
Thank you so much for giving me more opportunities to say what I know about this question number five. Yeah, Chair Michael, while normally they weigh immigration affect the country of the, affect the economy, excuse me, of the country where I live, it's that there are too many great immigrants and the country and there are not enough job to respond the need of everyone. That affect both migrants and the economy. I remember when I first come to the country where I live, life was not that hard because there were not all these immigrants. So there were so many people in the country concluded to much immigrants really affect the economic situation of the country where I live. It's my point of view. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you very much. So this is the last question. <laughs> A lot of people, you're kind of afraid of this question. But anyway, you should say something. Try to be brave. Say something. The question number six, the last question says, should illegal immigrants be reported? What do you think, guys? Should illegal immigrants be reported? Ms. Judith, please. Well, what Hello. I can say, yes, can you hear me now? Yes, we hear you really well. Okay, okay, what I can say, you asked immigrant about that question, you're so smart. <laughs> yes, what I can say, uh, what I can say, it's, 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 it's a very tricky question. <laughs> I can say no, why? I remember I had a Venezuelan taxi driver and he said, ma'am, I'm really, um, I'm really sad when I see immigration deported Haitians and us, um, Venezuelan, not too much, but a little bit, you know. And he said, because we're not here to steal, we are here to work. The problem is, you know, low, it's low. And the problem is too, when people hear immigrants, they said, oh, because Haitian or Cubans, the pay rate was $7 in Florida. Now some, some places it's less and they don't want to pay. They say because of those Cubans and here Dominican Republic, they say because of those Haitians. That's why people, the racist one, ones, they want illegal immigrants to go back home but they don't know illegals, immigrants, we do the job they don't do, you know? In my perspective, in my answer should be no, because some of us, we have money to pay to be legal, but here is some of us have money, but we can't be legal. For me, it's no, because God created the earth, it's for everyone, if mm. it's, Illegal immigrant is not killing people, stealing, should be here um, on wherever to, to be able to work because it's not easy to be being immigrant. For my answer, it's no. Thank you very much. And please with you, Miss um, Yolanda, with the question, the last question, number six, please. Mm. <clears throat> I've been thinking about this question for weeks and I asked myself the question, it crossed my mind, and I thought to myself, why not answer it with my heart? And after reading several harrowing stories of some refugees, one of them really touched me. Her name is Halia, and she's seven years old. And she said, the last thing I remember of Syria before we left was when my mother was taking me from our place to our grandparents. The woods were full of dead corpses. I saw dead people with no heads uh, or no hands or legs. I was so shocked I couldn't stop crying. To calm me down, my grandfather told me they were mean people. But I still prayed for them because even if some considered them mean, they were still dead human beings. Yeah. 
Back at home, I left a friend in Syria. Her name was Wuha. I miss her a lot and I miss going to school with her. I used to play with her with my Atawi bot. I couldn't bring it to me. I also used to have pigeons. One of them had eggs. I would feed them and care for them. I am worried about them. I really pray someone is still caring for them. But here I have a small kitten that I really love. I miss home a lot. I hope one day we'll be back and things will be just like before. So we can deny that every government has its rights, but there are people who run away from the worst at home. They have nothing, just the hope of living, of supporting their families, the hope of being able to wake up and have a smile on their face, or just being able to see a smile on their children's face. When you find yourself as a person among the freezing, exhausted people with children, you'll be simply a human being touched by the suffering. Children's and human rights come first. Nobody deserves to be left without food and a roof over their heads. Would it be human to send these people back to where they had to face death? I don't think so. I love your comment. Congratulations. It's oh a day. You did a good job. Okay, guys. So thank you. And thank you very much, all of you guys. I know you have a lot of things to say, but now we are about to finish and we should go because we already spent the hour, two hours. We are kind of finished. The topic was really, really, really nice. And about immigration, we will always, always have things to say, even though we had only six questions. But the two hours not, um, was not enough. So thank you and congratulations, all of you guys. The topic was really nice. And you raise your hand. I'm sorry. I cannot take you more because, you know, the time. Because of the time, I cannot take you more. You will have opportunity to say something before we finish. If you want to make a short comment and try to say something before we're done, it will be really nice. And especially, how did you see the club? If you really appreciate it, I would... Did you see the topic? We teach English. I encourage you, please, guys. You can encourage your friends, your family, also to learn English with us. And that will help them. Do you understand? So thank you and congratulations, all of you guys. So now we are about to finish. If you want to say something, as I said before, just go ahead and say it. And we are going to finish. Let's go, please, with you, Miss Tafi. Say something. Not really comment, but say something and about the clear about the way that you saw it before we're done, please. Oh, the club, the club was very interesting and also <laughs> sad because when you hear some story, that is so sad to hear. And when I was preparing the, the club, I I can finish to to watch some videos because it's really sad to see a broad middle of the sea with a lot of people into it and they not know they didn't know if they will arrive on destination but it's so sad but when we have opportunity to do research about this type of, of the subject that help us like an immigrant to have more knowledge and the way to you can defend ourselves if we were in a poor situation like that. Um, I really, really appreciate all of you guys who try to be in the reals and this subject. And I congratulate you first, Jamai, because a lot of beautiful subject, even though <laughs> the subject is a little, a little sad, but the knowledge will be helpful for life. Thank you and I love you. I love you guys. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much and congratulations for your job as well, Miss Stacy. You are one of my best students, always. Uh-huh. Okay, let, let, let's go with you, please, Mr. John Slay. Okay, now you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Okay, I just wanna I just, I just wanna congratulate you for 
for this topic because it's so important to talk about uh, the migration. Yeah, this, this this is so important to know what what we think about this and how we can consider a, a, an immigrant like us because you know um, there's different ways to to see it because not all of the people will be legal in in the country. So we have legal and there's legal and this is a good topic and I think that the people still here. Uh, they're gonna learn a lot about this because in practice, the English is just on point. Because if you want to speak a language who is not yours, you have to make a lot of effort to, to improve your skills and try to get better day after day. And this is so important. I want to congratulate you and all of the people who make the effort to be here and talk or sharing his opinion about this. Yes, yes. congratulations, sir. I really appreciate you guys from the Dominican Republic. I just don't know, but you have a good desire, even though things really tough over there. Because I got students from all the part of the world, but you guys in the Dominican Republic, you are doing really good. Congratulations, Mr. Johnsley. And respect for you over there, guys, because they respect you for that for this like um, amazing talent that you have for speak other languages. Okay, let's go with you, Miss. Um, okay, let's go with Miss Judith. I'm sorry. Let's go with Miss Judith. After Judith, somebody else. Let's go please with Judith. First of all, I want to say thank you again for immigration. That's a really hard topic. And you are doing a good job, a great job. And I liked when students, because myself, I'm a teacher, when the students express themselves about you like that. You are doing a great job, um, teacher Michael. And thank you for encouraging even your students. But I can please. Okay. <laughs> I want to say thank you with my teacher. Uh, honey, thank you. did it choose me for a number two and number three. I'm sorry. And the, the club was very interesting. You know, nowadays, this is a, the re, re, reality, you know, the, the immigration, you know, but I very like this subject. Okay, thank you. Yes, congratulations. You're, you're really nice. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. And your English also is thank very you. beautiful. Uh -huh. thank Let's go you. with you, please. <laughs> Let's go with you, Ms. Yolanda, please. So I can see that our time is just about up. So to finish, I'd like to say thank you first to you, Teacher Michael, for your hard work. And I can say some people brighten up the room with their presence, and you are one of them, and even managed to do so even from a distance on Zoom. And also all of you guys who were there with us, I want to thank you and congratulate you for that. Keep it the good work. And I, see, I sincerely appreciate that I have this opportunity to be present with you tonight. Like we said, if you want to learn English, um, quickly you can contact our teacher. So have a good night, everyone. Yes, thank you. Congratulations. You're also really nice. Uh-huh. Let's go with you, Ms. Judith, please. Thank you, Teacher Michael, for this deep topic. <laughs> it's, it's really interesting. Thank you so much. And also, thank you, everyone, to being there with us. It was really amazing. So I just want to say, anyone who would like to speak English, this is the best play, the, the best place to speak, to learn English. There's nothing better than having a lesson with a good teacher, like teacher Michael. <laughs> I really proud of him. So when you get a quick result, you can see your improvement, that it gives you a great confidence. So if you want to, to if you want to know more information, you can keep in touch with teacher Michael. Thank you. I love it. 
<laughs> I would appreciate that. So let, let's go with you, please, guys. You are about to finish, Miss Zully, please. Okay. Although um, I have not been an immigrant, I'm empathetic with, with people from outside my country. I love you, you guys, uh, brothers and sister, uh, and me. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. We love you too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very oh, much. Mm. Yes, let's go with you, please, Miss Elda. Thank you, Teacher Michael. This class about me for tonight, it is very good. I really appreciate the theme for tonight because I am an immigrant. Congratulations to you, Teacher Michael. Thank you very much for your effort. Even though you are working and tired, this does not prevent you from being on time in class. There's just that you have a lot of interest in us. Thank you, thank you so much, Teacher Michael. Have a good night, especially you, and I love you guys. Thank you. Congratulations you and your beautiful daughter, Erika. I know that you're doing a really good job. Yes, you're from Dominican Republic. We know how things are over there. So now let's go please with you, Miss Alien, before we go. Uh, thank you, Teacher Michael. And I love you guys. So I'm really happy to be there tonight. Uh, the beautiful subject was very interesting because I'm in regret. So <laughs> I'm extremely I appreciate it. Thank you, Teacher Michael. Yes, thank you as well. And congratulations. Miss Stirling, please. Uh, thank you so much, my best teacher. Thank you. Yeah, Teacher Michael, like I said before, you are always, you know, always choosing beautiful subject for your student. Yes. As I told you before, I had no knowledge in this field, but now I have a lot of knowledge. If for that reason, before I said, now I can say I am immigration officer because I have a lot of knowledge. Grace with you, I speak English, I have knowledge, I see myself, I improve my English day by day, I can say with everyone, I am speak English. I am not afraid. I don't have fear for, for talking about the topic with everyone because I have you in my life for, for preparing me for my future. For this reason, I'm very good of you, my teacher. I don't have words for express my feeling for you. But I can say a million thank you for you. And thank you so much, my, my friend Judith, for recommending me. You, you are my teacher. I congratulate you for that. You are a good teacher. I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of me too, because I'm very intelligent. If for that reason, every day I went talk it, uh, talking about you, you are my teacher, my teacher this, my teacher that, my teacher everything. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everyone. Miss Yolanda, I miss you. My dear, you will always help me about the something. Now I can say I speak English, you know. Thank you so much, my teacher. <laughs> yes, congratulations as well. You are one of my best. I got a lot of best students. But you're one of them. Congratulations. I love you too. Okay. Thank you, Teacher Michael. Thank you more. I congratulate you for the 
good topic you prepared for us. It's really important, really interesting. I really appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you again. Thank you guys. I was really participate with you. Thank you. Yes, congratulations. And thank you, Mr. Thank you. May because you're kind of humble. Because some of the other guys, they're struggling in the United States. Do you understand? But they don't have enough humility like to take the English class because they say you guys, you're other part of the world. I mean, the state. Yes, but we can see that. This is why I congratulate you guys. You're part of me. I'm part of you too. But I think after a couple of months, maybe three, six months after, your English will be amazing and be different as well. Okay, so that's all. That's all for tonight, guys. We are about to finish. So that's all. That's all for tonight. Thank you. And thank you, all of you guys. So have a good night, all of you. Sleep like babies. Try to get in touch together. Encourage your friend, your family to learn English with us. And try to get in touch with me because most of you, you are my student. But you can encourage friends and other people also to learn with us.